Hello and welcome to another SATS revision video. In this video we're going to look at the CGP Set B Grammar and Punctuation 4 test. I've said this before but it's worth repeating, these books are really really good to help you improve your SATS. So it's the CGP books, I always link them in the description below so if you haven't got these they're very very cheap and very very useful. So have a look on there, click the link and you'll be able to see where you can get those. If you've got this book, what I re recommend you do is go away, do the test as best you can, give yourself a maximum of 10 minutes. Once you've done that, come back, review this video and see if you got the marks. Okay, question one, read the words below. Tick the word which is a verb made by adding a suffix to the word apology. So a suffix is a section of a word that goes at the end to change its meaning. And we're looking for a verb, and a verb is an action word, so someone's doing something. So the one that jumps out to me is apologize, ending in I-S-E, because that's a verb. You're doing something, you're going to apologize to somebody. Number two, write a question beginning with the word given below. Now you don't have to be really fancy for this, you can just put a very basic question if you would like. So that's what I tend to do, just to save time. So what, we're going to ask a question, I'm going to say, what is your name? It's worth mentioning you will need a question mark at the end of that like you do with every question to make sure you get the mark. Okay, number three, read the sentence below, tick the pair of phrases that complete the sentence so it's in the present progressive. Something to remember about progressive is that it's always going to be are and then ending in ing. So if it's present, they are doing something. Okay, if it's past, they were doing something. So because it's present, we are going to be looking for that correct tense, and I can see the only one that fits my rule is this one here. They are balancing. Let's just check. The acrobats are balancing carefully on the tightrope, whilst the clowns are throwing into the audience. So that's the right answer there, that one there. Number four, circle the passive sentences below. So remember, an active sentence is where a subject is doing something unto an object. A passive sentence is the other way around. Something is being done unto the object. So looking here, Mickey burnt the cakes. That's active. Mickey's doing something to the cakes. Our decision was made. That's not involved any action at all. It was made for them. They've not done anything. It was already done. So that one is passive. Uh, the next one, the prisoner was captured. Again, the prisoner's not done anything. Something's being done unto him. So that one is also passive. And then finally, I practice playing the guitar. That is active. He's doing something or she's doing something. I practice playing the guitar. So these are the two passive sentences. Number five, the sentence below is missing two commas. Tick two boxes to show where the commas should go. So let's have a look at this. What I tend to do with these sorts of questions is read the sentence and then I will have a natural pause in between where these boxes are and see which ones tend to make more sense if I'm not sure. So I missed the parade, the one on the high street, because I overslept. So if I was to put a comma here, it would be I missed the parade, the one on high street, because I overslept. That doesn't make much sense. This one, I think, will be correct. So let's have a look. I missed the parade, comma, the one on high street, because I overslept. I definitely think that this is one. And it says tick two boxes, so make sure we have a look at the other one. I can start to see this here is starting to be a form of parenthesis. It's going to be this one here because it's effectively something you could put in brackets. So I missed the parade. You could put this bit in brackets. The one on high street because I overslept. So those are your two answers there. It's a form of parenthesis. Number six, choose a suitable conjunction to introduce the subordinate clause in this sentence. That sounds fairly complicated. What I would say is that if you're going to introduce a subordinate clause, you're going to need a subordinating conjunction. So I've mentioned this in many videos. There are two types of conjunctions you need to know about, coordinating and subordinating. Coordinating conjunctions are fanboys. If you search that, fanboys, you may have heard of it. F-A-N-B-O-Y-S is an acronym that helps you learn. So the F stands for for, the A stands for and, and so on. They're all the coordinating conjunctions. So if you're not sure of those, go away and learn those fanboys. Learn them off by heart. Subordinating conjunctures, I tend to have a list that I put in the video description, but there are different ways you can, you can memorize that. But the, 
The ones that I remember at the top of my head are things like because or although, uh, and there are other ones as well, but they're ones that always pop into my head. So as long as you're using a subordinating conjunction, you'll be able to get this one right, and as long as it makes sense. So let's have a look. I like to read something, I eat my breakfast. Now, because doesn't make sense here. I like to read because I eat my breakfast does not make any sense because those two clauses don't relate to each other. Um, it doesn't make much sense. While though, probably does. I like to read while I eat my breakfast. Those two clauses make sense now. Now we've got while. Although it is actually a subordinating conjunction, but it doesn't work. I like to read although I eat my breakfast. So I'm very confident that while is the correct answer there. Number seven, read the two sentences below. Explain how the meaning of the sentence is changed when the comma is added. So this is really interesting. Jessica loves bacon sandwiches and boiled eggs. So what we've learned from this is that Jessica likes bacon sandwiches as a whole and likes boiled eggs. But this sentence here, Jessica loves bacon, comma, sandwiches and boiled eggs. So the comma is suggesting this is a list. So Jessica is now liking bacon, just bacon by itself, sandwiches, any type of sandwiches apparently, and boiled eggs. So the way you would explain that is that the comma is making a list so that it's changing the meaning of the sentence. So the comma turns the sentence into a list. Now it's quite difficult to explain that properly in one sentence for one mark. However, if you were going to be really, really specific, you would say that in the first sentence, Jessica loves bacon sandwiches, but in the second sentence, it's saying that Jessica loves bacon and sandwiches and boiled eggs. So that you've made the examiner very, very aware that you understand that that is a list. But for the sake of this test, obviously this isn't the real SATs. The way I explained it, hopefully you understand that and you can see what I mean by the answer there. Number eight, read the sentences below and circle the determiner in each one. Now, a determiner is really useful. It tells us how many of something there is or who it belongs to, so it can be possessive as well. So some common determiners are things like the word a or an or the word the, because that tells us how many specifically we have. Also numbers as well, so two, three, four, they're all determiners, and also people's names. So if you said that's Jeremy's car, then the car belongs to Jeremy, that's a determiner. So let's have a look at the examples. We travel the distance between London and Dover, a determiner here, it tells us that it is the distance, so it is this one here. The is a determiner. Roy's golf ball is lime green. Remember I said it can be possessive. So whose golf ball is it? It's determining that. Rory's. There was an unusual squeaking sound. So there was only one unusual squeaking sound. It's and. That's the determiner there. Number nine, look at the table below, put a tick in each row to show whether each apostrophe is used as a possessive apostrophe or to create a contracted form or a contraction. So a possessive is quite simple, it belongs to you or somebody. A contracted form or a contraction is we're shortening the word like we do when we're speaking. So instead of saying I have, you might say I've. Looking at this sentence here, Michaela's car is white, we're talking about Michaela's car, it's a possessive. The horse's manes are smooth. Now, this is a plural possessive, but it's still the manes belonging to the horse, so that is also possessive. I can't go to the concert, that's contracted. It's short for cannot. So that's this one here, and there are your answers. Number 10, the sentence below is missing a hyphen. Tick one box to show where the hyphen should go. Interesting thing about a hyphen is it tends to bring two related words together, a noun and a verb, to create a new verb. So having a look at this one here, it's quite a common one actually, is man eating. This would be the one where the hyphen goes, because instead of you saying a man eating, this becomes a new adjective. So we're describing the shark. What sort of shark is it? It's a man eating shark. So that's where your hyphen goes. Number 11, read the sentence below, change all the underlined verbs from the present to the past tense. One has been done for you. So Francis is has been changed to Francis was. Pleased that her new car has, past tense of has is had. Air conditioning. Harriet's dog plays, past tense is played with its toys and chased next door's cat. The Johnsons, past tense of fly is flew. 
flew to Nepal on Saturday. I hope you found that video helpful and hopefully you've done really well on that and you've got many of those right. Don't worry if you didn't, This what that's what these videos are about, is to help you improve your knowledge so that when you actually come to take your sets, you're more confident, you know how to answer the questions and you'll find it even easier. So if there are areas that you maybe didn't do as well and you'd like to improve, write down the sort of things that you got wrong. Maybe it was the past tenses, maybe it was the use of apostrophes, whatever it is, write a little list and keep track of that and go away and do a bit of practice on that. I've got loads of free videos on this website to help you and on this YouTube channel. So if there's anything else you need, have a look on there, it's entirely free and try and improve on those for next time. Thank you very much for watching. If you found that useful, please subscribe, give this video a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video.